we'll go ahead and start down on the mat. So just find yourself in a comfortable seated position. Let's go ahead and let's just start cross-legged. We'll have a nice traditional start. So any comfortable sit, if cross-legged doesn't work, as always, tuck anything under you. I do have a couple blocks that always come in handy. I don't have anything strictly designated for them, but if you have blocks or anything similar and you want to grab those, and then once you have everything you need, go ahead and take a seat. Allow your arms to rest in your lap. Most important, sit up nice and tall. So you want to sit tall without tension. So see if you can lengthen your spine, a little bit of abdominal engagement and awareness to do that, but then make sure you're not creating tension in your neck and your shoulders. Maybe take an inhale through the nose and just let it go through nose or mouth, whatever feels good, and try to release the shoulders, the jaw, the muscles of the face. Feel yourself settling into the mat, settling onto the earth beneath you. Becoming aware of your breath, watching it, inhaling and exhaling. As you settle into the breath, see if you can start to create that rhythm. So each inhale is about the same length of time, each exhale as well. As we get moving, that's always hard to maintain, which is fine. But just make sure you're inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the nose. Filling the lungs completely, delivering that energy to your heart, to your body. Release your head forward, chin to chest, feeling a stretch in the back of your neck. And then just roll your head shoulder to shoulder. So you go one side, making a little half moon, ear to shoulder, and to the other side, ear to shoulder. A few times each direction. And after you've done that enough and your neck feels a bit looser, just working your way back up. And turning your head side to side, chin over each shoulder. A little bit of a slow motion no, stretching your neck that way. And again, working your way back to center. Deep in, inhale, extending arms up overhead. Exhale, place your hands behind you on the mat, tilt your gaze up and gently open your eyes. So you're looking up towards the ceiling, pulling the shoulders back, opening the chest towards the ceiling. Take a deep breath, expanding your chest, your ribs, your lungs, and then exhale, come to a neutral seated position. Bringing the soles of the feet together in bound angle, Parakanasana, sitting up nice and tall and then hinging forward, releasing over, letting your head drop down towards your feet. Taking a few breaths in and out. And rolling yourself up. Um, let us open our legs out wide for a moment. So toes towards the ceiling, knees towards the ceiling, sitting tall. If you're slouching, as always, putting something under you and bending your knees a little bit can help you. And let's just walk forward. So hinge from the hips like you're angling your chest towards the mat. I want to start opening up these inner thighs if we're going to work towards a peak posture of uh, Bird of Paradise. We need to start thinking about what our inner thighs are doing. Start opening that up. So just take a few breaths here. With this, really think about lengthening up and out rather than trying to drop down to the mat. Really think about lengthening that spine and notice what's happening here, toes and knees towards the ceiling, hopefully feeling that stretch in your inner thigh. Walking back up, bringing one leg in. I've got my right leg in against my left thigh, left leg is still out there. We'll do a lateral bend here. So the arm on the leg that you're bending towards can just get out of the way. Reaching up and over with the other arm like you're reaching for those toes. Shoulders are stacked. 
This arm does not have to go here. It could go beside your leg. It can go wherever. You just basically need it out of the way. So whatever feels comfortable for you is fine. If you want to turn your gaze and look up towards the ceiling, taking a couple deep breaths here. So it's really important you're bending sideways, not twisting. This is our lateral spinal bend. And when you inhale, press it back up. Bring that hand behind you, push into it, push up through that heel, really pushing up through this hip flexor, reaching the arm overhead. Take a deep inhale and exhale, stretching that whole body in your half wild thing. And releasing that down. Go ahead and switch sides, opposite leg out, opposite leg in, sitting up nice and tall. We're going to bend that way. Again, what you do with that arm doesn't really matter. This is more important to lift and grow tall. And then release over. Breathing into that side body, really filling these lungs, stretching the muscles over. deep breaths here again if you want to turn your gaze looking past your arm towards the ceiling as long as that's not hard on your neck you can do that and next time you inhale that arm goes behind you pressing into that hand opposite heel lifting the arm up looking towards that back hand deep stretch deep inhale all the way from fingertips to toe tips and exhale to release it down and then opening up again to Uttavista Konasana one more time lifting and hinging forward oh hello Tristina lifting growing long and tall so it's still like someone's pulling you from the crown of your head that thread we're lengthening out stretching the whole spine are you coming uh, yeah. Okay. And then release that up. Tristina, we did decide that we we're going to make this a bit of a, a more like a Monday practice, a slightly more intense practice, but we can't see you as with everything. Everybody do what you need to do to make it right for you. All right, come on over onto your hands and knees. Let's just do a stretch and puppy pose. So hands reaching out in front, toes turning under so the balls of your feet are on the mat. And give yourself a stretch sitting back towards those heels head drops down take a deep breath stretching out those shoulders so this is a great one for the shoulders because you're not you shouldn't be really putting pressure in your shoulders but you can get a nice stretch which in down dog you don't like you to really stretch through your shoulders too much because I don't want you to put pressure on them inhale exhale Good. and then walking the hands back coming to hands and knees just a few cow cats to warm up the spine inhaling and exhaling at your own pace I'm not going to add on to these today so just doing a few to get that back moving And then from here, just go ahead and twist side to side. It's a little bit like wagging your tail. I think of like a dog trying to see its tail. You're turning your head and turning your lower half of your body, your tailbone. A little bit of a curve in the spine there. I'm doing it here from sort of the cow posture. You can press up into cat and you can do it as well. You'll feel a difference. Inhale, exhale. Good, and releasing that. This time sitting back in um, resting warrior, so toes together, knees apart. And now you go ahead and relax back. Head drops all the way to the mat. A little bit of a different stretch through the spine. Inhaling, exhaling. Good, and then coming on out, coming all the way down to the mat. Hands are gonna slide out in front of you, coming up into Sphinx. So I just like to do this sometimes to help extend that spine and warm it up before we go into our um, chaturangas and cobras and up dogs, because this is supported. So your spine is extended, but your forearms are on the mat, palms are on the mat. Really contract your glutes here and make this as active as possible. So you're always lifting up, like someone's lifting up from the crown of the head, pulling the shoulders back, opening the chest, but you're not thrusting your chin up towards the ceiling. We want to keep it nice, neutral neck. 
So it's like a constant curve. And if you hit your head back like that, the curve would have like a kink in it. That's not what we're going for. And then release that one more time, sitting up and back. This time keeping knees together, toes together, coming to child's pose. So those are all three versions of sort of resting and you should feel a difference in your spine. The shoulders feel more or less the same, but here with our knees together, our spine is the most rounded. And then coming out, curling those toes under, pushing up into our first downward facing dog. Jogging through, bending one knee, bending the other knee, pressing the opposite heel towards the mat. And then pressing both heels towards the mat. Wide base for your hands. Always rolling shoulders away from the ears. Always a little teeny micro bend in the elbow just so they're not locked out. So it's not about bending the elbows. But I don't want you pressing into those shoulders and pressing into the elbows. You should really feel your back muscles engage. If you stay for a long time, that upper back should start getting kind of sore like you're really working. We're going to take this to a plank. So we're going to inhale out to a plank. And exhale up to your down dog. Inhale to plank. Always dropping to knees as you need. Exhale to down dog. Inhale to plank. And one last time. Exhale to down dog. This time, come out to your plank. So I just want to do one thing quickly just for review for everyone's safety and comfort. Because it's always a good, I think, a good idea to do and talk you through the cobra versus the upward facing dog and who should be doing what. You'll decide what you're going to do, but when we get to the sun citations. So this time, go ahead and lower all the way down to the mat with as much control as you can, elbows hugging the ribs. Release your feet so the backs are clear of the mat and your hands stay right where they are. Your elbows hug the rib cage. From here, inhale, lifting the chest, head, and shoulders as much as you can while maintaining the elbows against the side of the body and the shoulders down, contracting the glutes. There's your cobra, and release that. You could be baby cobra, a little bit lower, or full cobra. Curl your toes under, pushing into the balls of your feet, push up and back, downward facing dog. So for most people, cobra is probably going to be enough. Upward facing dog is more intense on the low back. It's a bit harder to do correctly. There's definitely more space for error. So I don't want to discourage you from doing it, but I don't want you to hurt yourself. Let's do three more of these transi transitions from plank on the inhale. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Warming up our shoulders. Inhale to plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale to plank. Exhale, down dog. Now this time, challenge option if you want to practice your upward facing dog. So it starts in a chaturanga. So you lower down, elbows hug the rib cage, and you need to hover. If you just collapse into the mat, that's fine. Come on up to cobra. Otherwise, from this hovering position, you flip the feet, and then you press up into your upward facing dog. Notice the elbows are not locked, and I'm not dropping in my hips. That shoulders aren't up by the ears. Shoulders are down away from the ears. Squeeze in the glutes as if someone's still pulling you from the crown of your head, glutes are locked. If you're feeling pinching or pressure in your low back, don't do this and stick with cobra. Mm -hmm. in this feet. And then curl the toes under, push up and back, downward facing dog. I just like to show that every once in a while because something I see people doing, I don't want to say wrong, but in a way that might cause pain. Not that you're going to do permanent damage, but that you could just end up with a sore back, and I don't like to see that. And then walk those feet towards your hands, letting yourself hang over. Grabbing hold of opposite elbows and just shaking it out, doing what you need to do to release your spine. Maybe you don't shake, maybe you twist, maybe you don't twist, maybe you just stand. You decide. Bending the knees, let the hips drop low, and let's roll all the way up, one vertebrae at a time. And let's stretch it out, reaching those arms up overhead, interlacing the fingers, reaching up, maybe even growing taller on tiptoes like you're lifting up as much as you possibly can. And then release that down, arms by the side. And roll your shoulders forwards a few times, loosen them up, and roll them backwards a few times. All right. Awesome. Shake.
shaking it out, and then bring yourself to your neutral starting position. So feet right underneath your hips, knees slightly soft as always, pelvis in neutral, belly button in, ribs in, shoulders down and back, but make sure you can still breathe. Bring the hands to heart center. So we won't do my sort of super sun salutations today, we'll do kind of normal sun salutations, and then we'll just kind of add on each one to bring us ultimately to that bird of paradise option for those of you who want it. So taking a moment, focusing on a point in front of you, your dristy point, always bring your gaze there when you're up in this position or many of the positions to give you a focal point. Next time you inhale, extending the arms up, a little bit of a back bend if you want, exhale, hinging forward, long spine all the way down, Uttanasana. Inhale, sliding halfway up, back is flat. Exhale, bend the knees so the hands can find the mat. Step the right foot back, followed by the left foot. You're in plank. You can always drop to knees, and here's where you have the choice. You're lowering all the way down to cobra, or you're hovering in chaturanga, and you're coming up into your upward facing dog. Exhale, curling the toes under, pushing back, downward facing dog. Make sure you can nod your head yes and shake your head no. Nice and loose. Inhale, right leg's gonna kick up, swing forward and plant down, followed by the left leg, releasing your head. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release, and inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center, samastiti. Round two, inhale up. Exhale, hinging forward, release. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release, hands find the mat, stepping left foot back, Followed by right plank, coming to knees, or from here, going all the way down, up into cobra, or to your upward facing dog. Curling the toes under, pressing back, downward facing dog. Shake your head no. No. Shake your head yes. Yes. Good. Left leg swings up, swings forward, plants, followed by the right foot, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, extending all the way up. And exhale, Samastiti. Take a breath. Refocus. Always breathe. Again, inhale. Exhale, hinge forward. Inhale, flat back lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, right foot steps back. Followed by left, again your option, transitioning to either cobra or up dog, exhale press back, down dog. From heel, right leg swings up, bend that knee, drop your right foot towards the opposite side. So you're lifting the right knee towards the ceiling, stacking right hip on left, lift your knee more. Try to get the knee towards the ceiling, that helps open up those hips. Good. Swing that foot all the way forward to the outside edge of your mat. We're going to do everyone's favorite lizard lunge. So the foot goes all the way to the edge of the mat. Go ahead and drop your back foot down. And then highly recommend a block, a book, a pillow. You just see where you are. So I'm going to show without the block. Your knee is over your ankle and you bring your forearms either to the block or all the way down to the mat if you can get there. For most of you, a block is going to be helpful. But if you can kind of see better, you can see my foot this way. Once you're there, if you want, pop up on your back foot so your heel is lifted. So what we're trying to do is create tension here. Your foot is rooted to the mat and your leg is rooted, of course, in your hip socket. And then you use that traction to be pressing that thigh open so you're getting an inner thigh stretch. You can do it from your hands, but it just isn't as deep as even coming to like a high block position, you get a better stretch. Take a few breaths. Inhale, exhale. Good, releasing that foot down, moving the block out of the way if you had it. Step your left foot up to the far edge of the mat, and so now you get a wide stance and just go ahead and hang over here. See if you can grab your big toes, pulling the crown of your head towards the floor. Knees bent more straight. 
And then release that, walk the hands in towards one another, or the feet towards one another, so you're in your regular position. Next time you inhale, slide up, halfway. Exhale, release. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, some steep two. Again, inhale up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back lift. Exhale, release, hands find the mat, left foot steps back, followed by right, transitioning through your version of Chaturanga to your Cobra or your Up Dog, back to Down Dog. Heels driving towards the mat, make sure you're always rolling shoulders away from the ears. Extending that left leg up, bending the left knee, dropping the left foot towards the right, stacking left hip on right, lifting through that left knee. Like you're trying to get it up to the ceiling. So you've got to rotate out through the hip. Bringing it back to center, swinging it all the way through, lizard on this side. So the left foot comes to the far edge of the mat. Go ahead and release the back knee down. Check that knee is over ankle. If your foot is back here, all you have to do is walk it up. Grab a block or a book or whatever, placing forearms on it. Pressing that shoulder against the inner thigh, and then coming up on the back toes only if you want to. Trying to keep the weight in all four corners of this front foot. It's really easy to roll out onto your pinky toes. See if you can keep all four corners down. Taking a few breaths here. Inhale, exhale. Breathing through these uncomfortable postures. Giving your body permission to relax. And feeling free to laugh at yourself, that's okay too. Releasing that back knee on the floor. If you had a block, move it out of the way. This time, we're gonna come to a low squat position. So, you're gonna step your right foot all the way up to the top of the mat. Turn your toes out and your heels in and drop into your deep yogi squat. But this is one that if you've still got a block handy, you may find you want to sit on a block. We're trying to lengthen through the spine. So better to be sitting up on a block with a tall spine than down here with a rounded spine. You're using your arms to press against your inner thighs. Grow nice and tall, nice and long. This is a great one to do on a regular basis. Good for digestion, good for the knees, great for the hips, the inner thighs. Good, and release that pressing all the way up. Wiggle those feet, heel toe, heel toe into the center. Releasing your head. Inhale, flat back lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, rising all the way up, opening chest towards the ceiling. Exhale, hands to heart center. Samastiti. Okay, next round, inhale up. Exhale, let's come to chair, actually. I lied, I wanted to do some Utkatasana. It's okay, can we get a nice stretch before dropping into chair? So, hands are at heart center, push those hips back, knees over ankles, chest is lifted, belly is in long spine. Only if you want, extend those arms. Notice how that feels. Inhale, exhale, could feel bad. And forward fold. Inhale, flat back lift. Exhale, release hands to the mat. Here's your power option. You can either step right foot followed by left, or if you'd like the power yoga option, you hop both feet back to plank. Trying to be fairly light on your toes. Good, chaturanga. To cobra up dog and back to down dog. Heels pressing towards the mat, shoulders rolling away from ears, releasing the head. Inhale, right leg swings up, swings forward, plants warrior one. So our back foot pivots. We rise up, either hands coming to heart center or extending all the way up. So remember, chest is forward towards that twisty point, as are your hips, your belly button, your nose. Everything's looking in front of you. Bit of a bend in your front knee, as deep as you want, while keeping the hips rotated forward. Inhale, exhale, shoulders down away from the ears. You can start extending into a back extension if you want. 
by bringing the gaze up and opening the chest towards the ceiling. Transitioning warrior two, so those arms drop out, back foot might wriggle back a little bit. What you're looking for here is the heel of the front foot, if you were to draw a line, hits about the arch of the back foot, okay? And the back foot is at an angle, and now the hips are completely open towards the long end of the mat. Pull those shoulder blades together. Nice deep bend in this front knee, but making sure it's over the ankle, not tracking out over the toes. And then the eyes are on the dristy point. And the arms are strong. When I used to teach in person, I'd go around and press on people's arms, and this is not what we want to happen. When I press on your arm, it should be very strong there. Not with tension, but with strength. Inhale, exhale. Our first side ankle bend. Bring that right arm across the right thigh. Keep this chest open towards the long end of the mat. Shoulders and the hips stacked. From here, extend that left arm up and bring the gaze up towards the ceiling. So we're going to build on this each time. But if this is the extent of what you want to do each time, you can just come to this side angle bend. It's a great place to start. Great way to start opening those inner thighs. Inhale, pressing up. Left hand behind the back. Flip the right palm, reversing your warrior. Keeping the bend in the front knee. Good. Coming over, facing front again. We're going to do a short balance pose here. We're just going to launch up onto the right foot. Left knee in front. Nothing super complicated. I want you to start feeling the balance in your body. Inhale and exhale. We're going to step this left foot back to a high lunge. Great. And now hands find the mat. Step the right foot back, plank, working your way through chaturanga. You can skip any chaturanga you want. Go straight to downward facing dog. Because we've done a few already and we're going to be doing a few more. Inhale, left leg extends, swings forward, plants down, warrior one on this side. Start working to see if you can make it in one move. So it's a fluid rise up, the hips are facing forward, chest is forward, pushing into that back pinky toe. Inhale, exhale. Eyes stay on that dristy point as we open this up, warrior two. Shoulder blades squeezing together, pressing open through this left thigh, rotating that right hip back, squaring your hips against the long edge of the mat. Strong arms, energy shooting out both sides. Side angle bend here, so left arm across the left thigh. Open your chest towards the long end of your mat, and then extend that right arm, bringing your gaze up to it. Keep a bend in the front knee. The more you're bent in this front knee, without coming over toes, but the closer to 90 degrees you are, the easier it'll be to get into the next version of this. Pressing up, reversing the warrior, right arm behind the back, left arm comes up. Good, pivot this towards the front of the mat. Find your balance, we're gonna launch onto this left foot. So we just come up, right foot in front. few breaths here. Just noticing what it's like to stand on that left foot. Stepping the right foot back to our high lunge. And then bringing the hands down to the mat. Left foot steps back. Chaturanga working your way through to your upward facing dog, your downward facing dog. I said that wrong. To downward facing dog, to your upward facing dog. Gazing forward, bend your knees, hop both feet, or step right foot followed by left to the top of the mat. Forward fold. Inhale, rising up into chair, arms, hands at heart center, or arms extended, your option. Sit nice and low, push the hips back, push the heels back. Inhale, exhale. Gazing at that dristy point in front of you still. And forward fold. Inhale, flat back lift. Exhale, release, bending the knees, step left followed by right, or hop two feet back to plank. Work your way through your chaturanga, cobra or up dog, 
to your down dog. Inhale, right leg lifts, swings forward, plants, warrior one. Again, as you do a few of these, see if you can find yourself fluidly finding that warrior one position. Seeing if you can remember it from last time, find it in your body. Transitioning this, warrior two. Gazing out over that front hand. Deep bend in the front knee. All right, so taking this to the next level, level of our side angle bend. So the, thigh, the arm goes to the thigh, and we turn our body towards the long end of the mat. If you're nice and open here and want to take it to the next level, I do recommend a block at either level, all the way up, down here, or flat, next to your foot. Or if you can reach, come to the floor. That's fine, too. But make sure that chest orientation is still towards the front and then extending that arm and lifting up. If you're twisted, a couple of things. Bend that knee more deeply. That's going to help get you down to the mat. If your knee is really straight, you're going to have to rotate to get to the mat. And if you're still not there, don't feel like you can't use a block. It's absolutely fine. Inhale, exhale. Good. Pressing all the way up, warrior two. Reversing your warrior. Inhale, right palm flips up. Back arm behind the back. Exhale, come up. Pivoting back to the front of the mat and our power lunge to launch up just like we did before. But now I want to start opening up this thigh. So with your right hand, wherever you want, hand at heart center or extended, grab that left shin and see if you can just invite it out to the side. You're going to have two challenge options today. This is our first one. Grab your foot or your toe. I'm going to turn this way so you can see me better. You can extend that arm for balance. And then start extending that foot, or that leg, I should say. Maybe it goes an inch. Maybe it goes further, 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 further. Maybe it doesn't. That's OK. With control, bring it back. I'm going to pivot back here. Step that left foot back. Hands to the mat, chattering them. Always skipping chaturangas if it's too much. Back to down dog. Same thing on the other side. Inhale, left leg swings up, swings forward, plants, warrior one. Can you find warrior one in one fluid movement? Couple of breaths. Opening up, warrior two. Few breaths here. Nice and strong and powerful. Side angle bends. So that left arm goes across the left thigh. Keep that deep bend in that knee. And then bring the hand to the mat. So I used to always teach to have the hand on the outside of the foot and press your knee against the hand. Some people like the hand on the inside of the foot, press the arm against the thigh. The moral of the story is they're both fine. If I could see you, I would tell you which one is better for your body. But I can't see you, so I can't do that. So just do one, what one feels better. But you want to be real open, chest and hips stacked, gaze towards the ceiling. Couple breaths. Next time you inhale, rise back up, warrior two. Reversing the warrior, right hand behind the back, left palm flips up. Next time you inhale, pivoting back to the front of the mat, launching onto the left foot. I'm just going to turn again to face you. Knee comes up, grabbing that shin. If you want to extend the arm, you can. Opening that shin out to the side. So you can just work from here. That's totally fine. If you want to take this further, you're seeing if you can reach your toe. Maybe you just stay here. Maybe, maybe, inch by inch by inch by inch, you extend that leg. Take a few breaths here, wherever you are. And wherever you are, bring that leg back, stepping it back to your high lunge. Hands to the mat, the left foot steps back. Working your way through that vinyasa, downward facing dog. If you need a break, dropping down to child's pose for a couple breaths. Otherwise, staying here in your down dog for a few breaths. 
Pushing the sit bones up to the sky, driving the heels towards the mat. Inhaling and exhaling. All right, two more rounds, bending the knees and stepping left foot forward or hopping two feet forward. Inhale, flat back lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, rise all the way up for real this time. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, chair, sitting down and back. Option to come up on the balls of your feet and balance in your chair. Pushing the hips back. Can you sink a little bit lower? Let the heels go down as you forward fold all the way. Inhale, flat back lift. Exhale, release, hands to the mat, stepping right followed by left, or hopping two feet and hold plank. 30 second plank. Feeling free to drop down to knees if your hips are dropping. Looking right between your thumbs. Elbows slightly rotated in so the insides of your elbows are facing one another. See if you can flatten out any arching that's happening in your back, spreading your shoulder blades. My shoulders tend to wing a bit. I'm trying to avoid that. Challenge option, one push up. Lowering down, exhale, press up. And now Chaturanga, Cobra up dog to down dog. If you collapse into the mat at any point there, that's okay. Inhale, right leg extends up, swings forward, plants warrior one. Inhale, exhale. Next inhale, warrior two. Next inhale, side angle bend, arm coming across the thigh is our first option. Arm coming all the way down to the mat or to a block is the second option. Now your next level of this is working in a bind. So you've got to be nice and low here, have that knee at a 90 degree bend. Keep this open chest orientation, but you can reach your right hand in between your legs and then your left hand comes around and grabs it but then you're still looking up at the ceiling. You're still in that deep end of your front knee. So, you decide, are you in option one? <clears throat> Walk before you can run. I tried. I know, trying is fine. If you're bound, go ahead and unbound, unbind, press yourself up, warrior two. Pivoting to the front of the mat. I'm enjoying these balance postures we're doing. Launching up into warrior three. So that left leg just shoots behind us. Toes towards the mat. Easing at the floor. Super chicken. Super chicken. I like that. And we're going to step back to our lunge. Hands on the mat. A little bit of a challenge option for you here. Right leg kicks up to a three-legged downward facing dog comes out to a plank, right leg is still lifted. Lower down with that right leg still lifted and then release into the mat to do your cobra up dog. Exhale, down dog. Left leg swings up, swings forward, warrior one. Keep your eyes on the dristy point, warrior two. Deep bend in the front knee. Keep it as deep as you can to come down into your side ankle bend. Option one, arm on knee. Option two, hand finds the mat or a block. Option three, left arm reaches in between the leg. Right arm reaches behind. If you don't quite connect, that's okay. If you like hold onto your shirt and hold onto your thigh, not everybody can actually bind even if their body is in the right position. But the important thing is here, this right shoulder should be pointing towards the ceiling. The right hip should be pointing towards the ceiling. And your nose should be pointing towards the ceiling. And rising back up, warrior two. Pivoting to the front of the mat, warrior three. Variation of warrior three. Toes pointing towards the mat, heel pushing behind.
stepping that back foot down, hands find the mat, left foot swings all the way up, three-legged downward facing dog, out to a three-legged plank, lowering down chaturanga, and then releasing your foot to the mat for your cobra up dog, exhale down dog. Bending the knees and stepping right foot forward followed by left or hopping two feet forward to the top of the mat. Keeping the knees bent, rising up into chair, Utkatasana. Rising up onto the balls of your feet. Sitting down a little bit lower. Heels to the mat, forward fold. Inhale, flat back lift. Exhale, release, hands to the mat, stepping left, followed by right, or hopping two feet back, plank, and once again, we're going to hold plank. You can always do this on knees. You could also come to forearms if you prefer. You could come to fists. I was talking about doing on fists. If someone has wrist issues, come to the fists. That can help. Having wrist problems doesn't mean you can't do planks. You just need to modify. Totally fine. Ten more seconds, this time we're going to do five push-ups, or as many as you can do. If it's zero, that's fine too. So tricep push-ups, elbows hug the rib cage. Exhale, press up. By all means, drop to your knees on these ones if you need to. Exhale, or just do little teeny baby ones. Three, and two, last one. Lowering all the way down, or chaturanga, come to cobra or upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Those who voted for a harder practice today might be regretting it right now. Hopefully not. Hopefully you're enjoying it. Shake your head no. Nod your head yes. Do we need a lion's breath? Yes. They did. Well, because normally Wednesday is the more mellow class. They were like, well. Take a deep inhale, lion's breath. Open your mouth, let it go, stick out your tongue. One more time. All right, right leg extends up, swings forward, warrior one, your Vipassana one. Repetition. Warrior two. Okay, sports fans, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. We're going to work on Bird of Paradise, which is a super advanced posture. So do not feel like you have to do it. Side angle bend. Your option, arm on thigh, level one. Option two, hand down to the mat or to a block. Option three, coming to your bind. Those of you who are in a bind, you have the option of bird of paradise. Am I going to be able to do bird of paradise from here? Hold on, I think I need some more space. Stay where you are. I hear bird of paradise. Okay, so those of you who are bound, Bird of Paradise, the left foot is going to step all the way forward. You're going to be balancing on your left foot, not your right foot. You rise up onto that left foot, and then the right leg extends. Find your focal point, standing up as tall as you can. Staying there as long as you want. Those of you in side angle bend, breathe through your side angle bend. Those of you in bird of paradise, if you haven't already, put that foot down. And then as gracefully as possible, step the back foot back. Come into your bind again. Everybody press up. Left arm flips behind the back, reverse your warrior. Straighten the front leg so you're in reverse triangle. And then come all the way up. Pivot towards the long end of your mat. Toes pointing forward, forward fold, releasing the head all the way down. Bending the knees, rolling yourself up. So if you totally did Bird of Paradise, awesome. If you totally didn't, totally fine. Maybe you didn't even try, that's great. Maybe you did try and you fell over, that's even better. It's all good, it should just be fun. Don't hurt yourself, just have fun. Turn the toes out towards the corners of the mat, coming to our goddess. So, hips and butt stick back, knees over ankles. Try to stand tall through here. Inhale, exhale. Make sure you can wiggle your toes so you're sitting in your heels. We're gonna do a little twist. We're gonna twist to one side, 
back to center. This is some abdominal work. Back to center. Exhale, inhale. Check that you're not coming out over those toes. It's always important. It's really easy to quit sitting low, to come into the balls of your feet, and be working your knees, not your glutes. Can you drop a little lower? Did you come up higher? Two more. One more each side, rather. That's it. Done. Squeeze all the way up. Forward fold again. Pivot towards the front of the mat so that right knee bends, coming to a long lunge, low lunge. Pause here for a moment to give yourself a stretch. Knee over ankle. And then step the right foot back. Chaturanga. Inhale up. Exhale back. Down to facing dog. Last round. You know where we're going. Inhale, left leg up. Steps forward. Virabhadrasana one. Transition. Virabhadrasana two. Transition. Side angle bend. Arm on thigh. Arm on blocker floor. Or hand on blocker floor. Or bind. Stay where you are, or those of you in bind wanting to work on Bird of Paradise. That right foot now steps all the way forward. You're balancing on the right foot as you rise up onto it. And then option to extend the left leg. Woo. Don't fall over, or do fall over. I just said that's half the fun, right? Find that focal point. Standing up as tall as you're able. When you've had enough, bringing that back in, sticking back with some level of grace to your side angle bend. Everybody on the next inhale, rising up and reverse your warrior. Right hand behind the back, left palm flips up. Straightening that leg, coming to reverse triangle. And then pivot towards the long edge of your mat. I'm just gonna turn around so my back isn't to you. Toes forward, hands behind your back, clasp them together, open towards the ceiling. Exhale forward, fold, let those arms float over. Pulling the arms back to bring yourself up. Turn the toes back to the corners of the mat, hands behind your head to come down into a version of goddess. And we're going to do a little abdominal work from here. We're going to bend to one side, back up. Exhale. If you're finding that this is too much, or you feel like you're in your knees more than your glutes and your, out, your thighs, just stand up with legs straight. You can still get the benefit of the um, abdominal work without sitting in this squat if you prefer not. Exhale as you bend. Inhale back to center. So you're not touching your thigh. As you can see, I'm miles from my thigh. I mean, maybe you are, but I would think for most of us, we're probably not. Maybe if you're really short torso, you would? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I have a pretty short torso. Last side, finishing the opposite side from where you started, back to center. Extending the arms, can you sink lower? Can you come up on your toes, balls of your feet? Lower the heels, pivot the, heel, the toes forward, and last forward fold here. Grabbing hold of toes, feet or ankles to pull the crown of your head down. Pivot towards the top of your mat. I have the wrong foot forward, but that's okay. Everyone, I'm going to switch feet here. Left foot should be forward, right foot back in your long lunge. And then step that left foot back. Last chaturanga, last cobra or up dog, and drop to your knees, child pose. I was gonna have you come to one more chair and do twist, but we'll do twist down here, what do you think? Good plan. Come on back up, spin around and get those legs in front of you. No more hard stuff, I promise. I'm not going to sneak in any reverse plank. That was fun. I had fun. <laughs>
Nothing that fun. No, not so much. Feet towards, toes towards the ceiling. Someone thinks I'm twitching. I think you guys are probably smiling. I can't see. I'm just assuming you are. Inhale, extending up. Exhale, just release. Take a few breaths. If you can grab hold of something, if you can grab your ankles, cool, feet, toes. I like putting a block in front and grabbing the block. And then releasing that, bringing yourself up, bending your knees, holding onto your thighs, lower yourself down, hugging your knees into the mat. Giving yourself a little rock from side to side. And then hug that right knee in. Extend your left leg. Single wind release posture. Opening up this thigh one last time. So grabbing hold of that right shin and just gently keeping the left hand on the hip that you're not rolling over, but you're just gently opening that thigh out. And bringing it across, bringing that knee to the mat, trying to get the right shoulder on the floor. So if the right shoulder is not on the floor, put a block or something under that knee so the right shoulder can come to the floor. And then just get your arms out of the way. If you want to cactus them, if you want to extend them, if you want to put a hand on your own self, Turning and looking over the right shoulder. Taking a few breaths here. So the last time, not maybe the last time, but one of the times we did Bird of Paradise, when I posted the video on YouTube, that was the picture that I used as the thumbnail, was me and Bird of Paradise. And twice, YouTube removed it. It was, it was like, said it was inappropriate content. Mm -hmm. I was like, because my legs are sort of open, like so weird. I thought it was a mistake, I put it up again. Nope, took it down, inappropriate content. Like really, of all the stuff on the internet, me doing Bird of Paradise is a problem. Okay, thanks YouTube. Yeah, because people are hurting animals. <laughs> Come back to center, <laughs> hug both knees into your chest. Other side, hugging the left knee in, extending the right leg away. Keeping the right hip in the mat, open up the left shin. And then bringing that knee across all the way over to the mat or to a block. Bringing the left shoulder to the mat. Go ahead and turn and look over that left shoulder, placing a block under the right knee if you need to. I'm going to take a few breaths here. The hands and arms can go wherever you want. Just out of your way. And then bringing yourself back to center one last time, hugging your knees into your chest for a little hug. And then coming to happy baby, reaching hands in between the legs, grabbing hold of the feet or the ankles, and giving yourself a rock. And then from your happy baby, just release this down, extending your legs out in front of you. Bring your arms down by your side, palms up a little ways from your body, and just nestle yourself onto your mat, chin slightly towards chest, just to protect your neck. Take a deep inhale. Open your mouth and side out. <sighs> if that felt good, do it again. And then just relax and release, giving your body a much needed break.
the breath to deepen again. Take deep inhales through the nose. Feel your entire torso expand. Exhale, really breathing out all of the air. So when you next take a deep inhale, it's even a fuller, deeper, bigger breath. Recharging your body all the way from the top of your head down to the tips of your fingers and toes. We begin to allow those muscles to reawaken. When you're ready, drawing your knees and towards your chest, giving yourself a little hug and a little rock, taking a moment to thank yourself for practicing. And then rolling onto your side. And when you're ready, pressing yourself up to sit. Finding yourself in a seated position as we began the practice. Noticing your breath now, noticing your state of mind and body. Whilst you sit there, I just want to read you something. A little inspiration. just because it's St. Patrick's Day. I'm going to offer you the Irish blessing to take you through the rest of your evening, because I like this. Often I offer you non-Irish things. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rains fall soft upon your fields, and until we meet again, May God hold you in the palm of the hand. Om Shanti Om. I wish all of you peace and love and the luck of the Irish today. Namaste.